Good morning. It is good to see you today. I am so glad you're joining with us today, and I look forward to sharing with you today. Today, I'm going to be talking about finding our purpose through prayer. But before we do that, I encourage you to enter into worship as the worship team leads us today and just be before the Lord that he may touch you and minister to you. I searched the world But it couldn't fill me A man's empty praise Treasures the faith Are never enough And you came along and Put me back together Desire is now satisfied here in your love. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, we know it's true. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing. Nothing is better than you, Grace. 
the middle of the storm. Louder and loud, you're gonna hear my praises roar.
Thank you, worship team. You know, today as we talk about finding our purpose through prayer, you know, our prayer life can look like a roller coaster. I mean, up and down, up and down. And But one way of stabilizing our life is to use prayer to find purpose for our life. We all know the importance of prayer, and we're taught through the scriptures and through prayer. praying with each other and through parenting and small groups and through sermons, the importance of prayer and how it touches our life. Yet many times our prayer life is really like a roller coaster. At one end, we're immense in prayer. We're, we're into it. We're doing it. And we fast and we pray and we cry out to God. And but a lot of times this is generally when we're in trouble or we're going through something or we're anguished or we're anxious about something, either for ourselves or for somebody we love. And our, our, our church, or our nation, and all the things that are going through. But on the other end, there's, there's times where we just go through the motions of praying. Maybe it's because we feel guilty if we do not pray. You know, some of us believe that we should pray about everything, and and there are some of us who pray only about the very important things, not for the trivial things. Most of us are somewhere in between these two things. So how do we find life, our purpose in life, through prayer? In Colossians 1.16 in the NIV, it says this, For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. The word is really clear. Everything around us, including us, is created by him for him. And therefore, we can find cannot find purpose outside of him. You know, Ephesians 1.11 in the message says this, and it kind of reaffirms what we just said. It is Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. It should settle some questions as to whether we can find purpose in God. And I think that we can only find purpose in him. The only way to understand this purpose is to be constantly communicating with the Lord. That's precisely what prayer is. It's a constant conversation with God. It doesn't matter which end of the range that you're in. We as Christians are asking to pray without ceasing. You know... There's something that we need to think about. I mean, how do you pray without ceasing? Is it is it, are you talking to God all the time? Yeah, sometimes it's I'm audibly talking to God. Sometimes I'm I'm thinking about things and asking God for wisdom and guidance on how to do things. But you know, the Bible doesn't give a lot of examples of long prayers. You know, it does talk about King Solomon and some of his prayers. And and there was some short prayers by Nehemiah. And then there's several in between. So the good news is it's not important the style of your praying, but that we are communicating with God. Whether you use the Acts model or, or just a conversational mode of prayer, it's that we are talking to God and we are con- conversing with him. That we're having conversations about life with God. That is the important thing. Are you talking to God about things? So how can we use prayer to find purpose in our life? I'm going to give you four steps to help you to understand the purpose of our life through prayer and an understanding that God will bring about some things. Step one, seek God 
self-will through prayer. Thanks to our fallen nature, we all have our own self-will. I want to do it. And some of us have it very strong, and, and some of us have manageable levels. So it's natural that we want to push our own agenda with God, even before we get to start, start it to pray. We've made up our minds about what we need. I know what I need. Let me pray for it. Let me give God my grocery list, my shopping list, what I need. And I'll tell him how to do it. And in short, we seek his approval for our plans rather than for God's plans. But Proverbs 19.21 tells this. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel will stand. I'm not in no way saying that God wants to, that we can't bring our needs before him, that we can't bring them before him, that, that, that that's wrong. But we have a freedom to ask for what we want. But we are also reminded multiple times that we are to surrender our will and our wishes to him. You know, Jesus exemplifies it in the Garden of Gethsemane when he prays for the bitter cup to be taken from him, but then immediately surrenders his will to God. Not my will, but yours. You know, it's the centerpiece of the Lord's Prayer that we often repeat and notice several times that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, Paul, he... He questions himself in, in 9 6, and it's loud and clear. He, he asks the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do? This is after God has knocked him off the horse, and he's blind. He says, Lord, what do you want me to do? Can we make that our prayer? Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, show me the things you want me to do. So the first thing is we seek. God through prayer, his will through prayer. The second thing is we wait in faith for an answer. You know, <laughs> we, we live in a world that seeks instant gratification. I want it and I want it now. We like things instantaneous. You know, healing should be immediate. Lord, I, I prayed for this. It ought to be healed immediately. This instant gratification has gotten in our prayer life as well we want immediate answers or else we think that that god's not answering and and we're not getting the answer the bible teaches us to wait on the lord you know habakkuk did this after some strong complaints to god in habakkuk 2 1 it says i will stand my watch and set myself on the ramparts and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. You know, Psalms gives us uh, a ways which we must wait for answer. Psalms 37, 7 teaches us to wait patiently. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Psalm 62, 1 teaches us to wait silently. Truly, my soul silently waits for God. Proverbs 3, 5 teaches us to wait trustingly. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Psalms 27, 14 teaches us to wait courageously. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the, say of the, on the Lord. Wait. There's something about waiting. Psalms 30, 135 says this, teaches us to wait and a hope that's rooted in the word of God. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I do hope. Sometimes it is so hard to wait. You know, when I, when I think about waiting on things, sometimes it makes the answer that much sweeter when we have to wait. That we know we're in the right place. And I encourage you, learn how to wait and wait patiently. The third step is obey his instruction when it comes. You know, 
when we pray, we seek God's will that it will be revealed to us. We are supposed to, right? The answer is obvious, isn't it? When, when God shows us what to do, we should do it. We are expected to obey. And somehow, many times, we resist it. We resist his answers. And, and, and many times, we're tempted to say, no, God, he don't really want us to do that. No. Obedience is not always easy. Many of us are like Jonah. When God asks us to do something, we take off the other direction. <laughs> he instructs us to come, and, and we need to obey when he says, do this. When we, when we know in our spirit this is the right thing to do, we need to do it. His instruction should come easy to us. We should, we should follow him. Even when his instruction is not to our liking. There have been many times that, I, that I've had to do things that I was just like, I don't really want to do this. But, you know, I felt that the presence of the Lord said, do it. And I did it, and I was so glad I did. Because it brought healing, it brought peace to my life when I was obedient to what he wanted me to do. Obedience is not always easy. And then, but if we look at Jesus' life, and it's not always to our liking, Jesus prayed, if there's any way that this bitter cup can be taken from me, do it. But he went ahead and he said, that he said, not my will, but your will be done. He was in full obedience. He went to this crucifixion out of real obedience. I can tell you what, when we need to come to the point where we say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done, it changes everything. When, when you are obedient to what God wants you to do, things work out. The fourth step is be at peace with the outcome. You know, once we follow these three steps, our work is done. And, it, and it's at then that we, we are up to God to, to, to work out things. And we should accept this, right? It should be easy. This should be the easy part, to be at peace with the outcome. We know that God's answers to prayer are, are yes, no, not yet. And then there's this, this other one. Are you kidding I think that's what Jonah did when, when, when he said, go to Nineveh. He says, I know you, I go, and as I go, you're going you're gonna to say, I forgive them. Sometimes we have to be okay with the answers. We need to have the strength to accept it and quit fretting about it. You know, we generally praise God when God answers something. Yes. Yes, God answered a prayer. Can we do the same when God answers no? When he says, no, you can't. Not yet. Are you kidding, Lord? You mean I got to do that? It takes a lot of faith. You know, David prayed fervently for his illegitimate child to be saved, but... When God's answer came, he accepted it, and he found peace in the answer. Paul prayed for the thorn in his flesh to be taken away, but when the answer came, he found peace in it. It wasn't the answer he wanted. See, I would encourage you to look at John 17 and 18 this week, that you would take some time to look at it, and kind of apply these these four steps to these two chapters. And I'll I kind of give you a little outline. Jesus prayed in, in, in John 17, 1 through 5, it, and he was seeking God's will. And then it goes on in verses 6 to 8, and then he's waiting for the answer. 
And then in chapter 18, 5 through 8, he's obeying the answer. And finally, 1837, he's at peace with the outcome. Let's kind of examine our prayer lives once more. Do we use prayer, our prayer to find our fulfillment and our purpose in life? Or do we use it to manage or manipulate God's will and move, maneuver around obstacles until we get our way? If we do that, we need to realize that we are placing ourselves out of, outside of God's will and have to live with the negative consequences. Tough thing. Are we, attempt, or, or are we tempted to quit praying when our prayers don't get answered quickly enough or in the manner that we want them answered? If we, need, if we do that, we need to realize some of the best things to re- require us to wait and acknowledge that God knows what's best for us. When the answers come, are we willing to obey? Are we willing to follow his plan, or do we want to get our way anyway? Hmm. It's tough. Obedience. It's a great thing. The last thing is be at peace with the outcome. You know, trust God. Say, God, I trust you enough with, with the purpose in my life to follow you and do what you want me to do. When we come to that, it just transforms everything in our life. I encourage you to come to the point where you seek God's will through prayer. As you're praying for him, you wait for his answers. You obey it when it comes. Whatever he follows, tells you to do, do it. And you're at peace with the outcome. When we learn how to be at peace with what's happening, life is so much better. I encourage you today. Let me pray for you. Father, I just thank you that we can always come to you. Lord, you want to show us your, your purpose for our life. Lord, you want to show us the things that you want to do. Lord, we want to be prayerfully seeking those things. Lord, we just thank you that even as we pray, you will answer us. And Lord, we just want to be patient to wait for the answer and not, not get ahead of you and try, not try to make things happen, but to wait on you. Lord, that we would obey the things that you want us to do. That we would be obedient to step through the doors you open up for us. That we would be willing to walk away from the things you ask us to walk away from. Lord, we want to be willing. And last, Lord, we want to have peace with the decisions we make. Lord, I ask that you would just impart peace to us, even as we make decisions that things would just open up and just things would be open before you, that you would touch us and minister to us. We give you glory and honor today in all that we do. Amen. I'm so glad you joined us today. I believe it. if, if you need a place to fit in, we would love to have you here at Evangel. You can join us at our live service on Sundays at 10 a.m. Or if you're not able to do that, I encourage you to keep joining with us on social media. We would love for you to be a part there, too. I encourage you to be a giver and a tither. And if you haven't learned how to tithe, I encourage you to say, Lord, I trust you that your word is true. And I encourage you to be a tither, giving 10% of what God's put in your hands. I tell you, I can do more with the 90 percent than with the 100 percent because god is with me with the with the 90 when i'm faithful to give my 10 percent and i encourage you to to be that way you can give many different ways you can go to our website use paypal or you can use bill pay or you can use the u.s mail or you can even drop it by the office we would love to see you and love for you to be a part of what we do here at evangel have a great day